what did you want to know, essentially, mate? Obviously, I know that you wanted to know a little bit more about the day and the routine. Yeah. Um, so what, what essentially did you want to delve into? So I know your day-to-day has obviously changed as you've, you've grown with your client base um, because you've moved away from different things. Like you used to do Facebook groups quite a lot, didn't you? Oh, yeah, true. And then that, that quietened down a fair bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was things that you used to do a lot more, um, like your YouTube videos, you were doing daily videos and everything, but now you're not doing that because you're at that place where you've got enough clients, you don't need to get any more leads in. So things like YouTube videos, Facebook groups, they're just more of a burden than anything else. Agree. Yeah. So your, what would your your general day look like for for both sets? So for trying to get new leads in and currently now what you're doing obviously with your your full capacity client base. Yeah, sure. No, that, that's a that's a yes, yeah, a very good point that I used to do a lot of different things that I don't actually do at all now. So when I was growing, I think the main the main preface was like just trying to communicate with as many people as possible and like just get people knowing what I was doing. So whether that was the YouTube videos which were potentially daily they were more so in the line of like documenting my prep and just trying to grow a little bit of a little bit of a circle on YouTube um, as a, because I had a very small circle on there and it was just mainly developed through the podcast. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like likewise with the podcast, the podcast was great for getting my name out there. <clears throat> but it got to the point again where it's it. it for me, the reason why I switched doing it to like the ones that I do with Vicky and the ones that I do with athletes is because I just got bored of doing the same interviews with the people that are all being interviewed by 10 other different podcasts and just talking yeah. about the same old shit. So what I found with like, and again, and again this, this is all relative to the fact that I've stopped doing some things, like the Facebook groups, um, everyone else does them, you know, everyone else does a Facebook group. And everyone's in a Facebook group and I just got sort of quite, it got repetitive in terms of the things that I was doing. They were working to get people in, but I think what I'm doing now is, is actually whilst it's different, it's still very good for growing a business because the business is still growing. I just can't take on board everyone that's inquiring, which is obviously a even a better place to be in than I was yeah. when I just take on everyone. Right. Um, So I think that nowadays where the best growth that you can have in terms of the online coaching scene is just by making sure that you're, like I said, I think I put out a YouTube video on this, is like profiling your clients. So instead of just doing a lot about yourself and what you're doing and YouTube vlogging and things like that, whilst that's great for giving people an idea of your personality, which is definitely required, I think it's a good idea to to take on take basically your your client's content and reshare it, repost it or you know talk about your clients if they've got a small social media, help them grow their social media so that more people are viewing their stuff when they talk about you so yeah. that you know the 10 people that you send to their page potentially look and look at what they're doing then potentially in the future becomes an inquiry for you, you know. Um so, uh, yeah, I I think now now so I, I focus more on on profiling clients and doing the Team MBM Instagram, and then obviously I moved a lot of my video content towards the member site so that I could sort of get a, like a a bit of a um, a monetary value from that, and especially yeah. like it's just the time and effort that I sometimes put into those videos and the quality of the content that's coming out on them. I felt like it just got to the point where it deserved a little bit of monetary value so that people felt like they were, you know, paying for something premium as opposed to just watching a YouTube video. Yeah. Um, so that's where I switched sort of ways there. And then if if you wanted to sort of know how I how it's set on my week and how I'd go about making sure that I have consistent time to be able to do the content, etc. So... I take Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all towards check-ins. Okay, um, cool. Some may flood into Tuesday, so I like I have I think three today that I've got to do. Um, it depends as to how efficient I am over the over those 
actual check-in days. Um, and it also depends as to whether anyone checks in late. Yeah. Um, but those days are, are basically minimal external work. So minimal video making. Um, the only video content that I'll do is keeping up to date with my Instagram story and posting on there. As a, besides that, it won't be anything. So no member site content, no nothing over those days. So therefore, Wednesday, Thursday um, are literally my only days where I create. So those are the only days where I add Tuesday kind of where I actually create content. So I, I, I'll be doing the member site videos. I'll be doing a QA, and a and I'll just generally have a bit more time. But I also make sure that <coughs> make sure that those days I actually back off a little bit. So yeah. whether whether that's like just working a little bit in the well, working a little bit in the morning. So I always work in the morning. So my my time between and this is obviously definitely down to you as to when you do your work, but I find I'm most productive when I have a morning block of work and then I train like in the mid afternoon when the gym is still quiet. And then I come back, and if it's a che- if it's a check in day and I'm training, I'll still work. So I'll do like yeah. work from five ish until sometimes as late as like nine, and then I'll be done. Um, but I'll make sure on the days where I've got less to do and not check in days that most likely my afternoon evening will be spent just trying to chill, and whether it's yeah. getting on with some getting on with some work that's like very easy so it doesn't tax you much mentally or whether it's literally just sitting down and and just watching tv for a bit mate um because i've learned that i can quite easily just keep going keep going keep going and then by the time i roll around to friday again i actually get a bit too drained and a bit like do i really want to do all these check-ins and that's the worst (laughs) feeling because deep down we really want to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when when you when you're non-stop, you you get this sort of weird feeling of like ugh, just a bit like I'm a bit meh with looking at my laptop and thinking about fitness all the time. So when you have your yeah. time off, just or your or your chill time, just try and do something that's just like non-fitness related. So like you'll see me watching like Netflix or Hunted or something like that, and I always try and do that. Just the switching off is really important. Because yeah. up until now, you've had something else to take your mind away from fitness, like you've had another job. But yeah. now that you've not got that, it's like fitness, 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 bodybuilding, macros, training, all the fucking time. And yeah. there will be a burnout stage. There always is. So, um, uh, That's a good point, mate. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good point to sort of factor that in. And so we're, how many checkings will you be doing on those days? Do you, do you set a limit of how many you do a day? Yeah, that's a good question. So Friday, Saturday, Monday and a bit of Tuesday, they're like usually anywhere between five or six. Sunday is pretty mental. It's like t- trying, to t- t- trying to fit in like 20, 25 in a day. 20. Oh, yeah. Wow. And that's, I must admit, mate, that's that's too much. I've taken on a little bit more than I can chew because as soon as I came out of contest prep, I was like, right, cool, I've got all of the energy in the world now. I can really push the amount of people that I can take on. And uh, I was, so I took on a lot of people that had inquired whilst I was prepping and I sort of said, I'm going to take on more when it comes to the new year. So I took on a lot there, took on a lot in the new year especially contest prep people which wanted to start which is great but the contest prep people like there's a lot more work that goes on um and it, it's 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 a lot of effort so that sunday day like i had you know the previous just last sunday um by the end of it i'm i'm certainly i feel put it this way i feel more tired than on like a really really hard training day on that day than i do any other day yeah because it's just non-stop thinking and you know your brain gets fried it really does so i wouldn't recommend especially when you're doing video feedback doing any more than 20 i'm sure if you're a if you're a normal online coach and you just do like a one word email you could probably do like 50 or 100 in a day you know <laughs> I, I know some of these big online coaches that that have like 75 80 clients yeah. And they're still taking on more and setting up new people, but mm. that just that literally just shouts to me that their their feedback 
their feedback is just probably poor in comparison yeah. to what we offer, you know. And I'm pretty prepared to say that because I know that I put in, you know, at least half an hour per check-in. Yeah, um, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it because yeah. obviously you've got do the programming part, you've got to make sure the spreadsheet's all up to date, do the video, send it over. So, yeah, it's it, the feedback side of things. But then that, it makes the client feel feel valued as well so mm. they're actually giving them a good feedback um and I've, i'd never go back to doing email like i think no. i did it for did it it's, for one week and i was like this is shit it's not fun talking, either but... it's not fun for us like i don't get any fun out of sitting on my sitting on my laptop doing emails like i prefer chatting prefer moving yeah. like speaking if you spend all day doing emails you'd never say a word yeah, <laughs> so you're not actually <laughs> talking about fitness you're just typing it's just bit boring if i'm if i'm honest yeah, yeah. um yeah. what to ask you mate as well is like you're obviously you're you still get people asking for consultations and stuff sure do you still get leads into your business because obviously you, i don't ever see you advertise for coaching ever no no i don't <laughs> i don't i don't thing to be able to do that and not and still get leads in all the mm. time mm. it's just a case of you wait until someone asks you yeah, well, I think the way that I advertise is like kind of incognito advertisement. So when I put up, like, I'm not trying to necessarily say work, hustle, grind and all that shit, yeah. Gary V. when I post up a picture of me doing a check-in or my, my check-in screen. But what that does tell people is that I coach. And yeah. then especially I found, like, yesterday, for example, when I put up those two videos of me speaking on a check-in and giving like female posing advice etc i got two inquiries on the off the bat on a reply to that in a dm on instagram because yeah. what it shows is like oh wow like ages doing this this coaching and these video check-ins um and obviously then people know that i'm a coach and they just get intrigued by that so i'm kind yeah. of kind of advertising but not saying i do coaching because you try and force something down someone's mouth it's like all the emails you get now and again from amazon saying you know this product's on offer you don't want any of that because they're trying to force you to buy it anything forced is just never good so yeah. trying to get to like a laid back approach and just showing what you do tends to work a um a lot better in my opinion um it just tends to promote a much better result when it comes to getting people in and people because people want to be coached like they make the they make the decision um but yeah I, I i don't think i don't think you'll need to advertise to be honest mate and again like just talk about your clients um get like a page set up like another instagram and just start resharing loads of client stuff on there even if like even if you have like a low volume of clients which i know that you don't because you, you're getting in enough people to to go for it and like go self employed but when even if even if you're at that lower level of of clientele, like you can still post like about them, it just doesn't matter. Like you know, some of my clients don't even have Instagram, so they won't ever appear on Team MBM the page. But I have enough that do, so I can share yeah. their stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I do sort of with regards to advertisement, mate. Just talk talk about what you do, show what you do, um, and you know do do the things like you know when you were doing your morning walks and i know that you still do talk about topics and things like that but you know if you get a question share the answer to the question on your story you know just show that you're getting involved in getting stuck in and answering things that tends to work like really really well in my opinion um yeah but but it does just build you know it, it builds yeah, it's it, it, it build. it's like a snowball effect really that's what I've noticed is, you know, once once you once you get to here, it's like cool. I'm like at twenty clients, and then you know you get to twenty five, and then more inquiries come in, and then you get to thirty, more inquiries coming, and it, it, yeah, it really is like a snowball effect, which is why I can believe like people like, you know, Lane Norton and things like that in the past when they said, you know, I'm, I remember watching old Lane Norton videos and him saying, you know, I've got so I get. I get like 50 emails a day and <laughs> I was like, fuck, you know, I'm that definitely not like at that level yet. I'm definitely nowhere near that. But you can tell with like the level of 
sort of um, awareness and presence that he has that that's totally feasible. Totally yeah. feasible. But fuck that. I'd hate that. <laughs> I, I get overwhelmed with the amount that I get now. And I, you know, I'm lucky if I get two or three, two or three a week, maybe four. Um, if I got that a day, I'd just, I, I don't, I'd have to get like a PA or something to handle my fucking emails because I just wouldn't want to look at them, you know? Need to bring yourself another coach on board, mate. Yeah, it's something I've thought about. But at the end of the day, it's like, oh, let it go. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be letting a bit of it go and I'd be trusting someone else yeah. in the name and the brand. Yeah. Um, there's no reason why I wouldn't do it in the future, but I think at the moment I'm just very happy with like keeping a relative cap on how many I take in yeah. and then just focusing on giving them the best service possible. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, 100%. Mate. Yeah. You, know, in, it, you know what it's like. You can make enough money out of that, you know? Um, and at yeah, the end of the I day, am I... Get to a certain point. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not, I'm not, dri- I'm not honestly driven by money. I'm just driven by doing doing a good job, making a good name for myself and getting shit hot results and, and yeah. waking up and doing something that I fucking really like. Like, that's what I care about. Um, if I have to wake up and wake up and manage a team of like five, six coaches, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd like that, to be blunt. And even if it made me, you know, a lot of extra money, I don't I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't know what I'd do with it because I don't really want like fancy crap. <laughs> or anything i don't i don't, i'm quite happy driving the car that i've got um obviously i'd like yeah. to you know i'd like to be where you're at with a property and you know things like that i'd, I'd like to certainly like to do things like that but that's that's feasible with where i'm currently at so i don't you know i'm i don't want to be like steve jobs or anything <laughs> I, don't, I don't care I, i'm sure you're the same as well you know, yeah. as long as you can live comfortably, you can go on holidays, you can afford to live in a nice place, afford your food, um, you know, things like that. You know, I think that's the best thing is just being in a comf- comfortable place. Yeah, no, I agree, mate. Yeah, yeah. really do agree with that. So yeah. anymore, you just sort of bury yourself trying to earn more money and it's it's not really the best thing to be doing. Yeah, and what, what's it for? Yeah, exactly. You, just, you, know, you only go and put it in your savings account, and it just sits there. So it's just like just okay. greed, isn't it? Really, just exactly. greed. No, uh, agree, mate. Agree. Yeah. So I mean, to be honest, mate, it was just more trying to find out your current routine and everything. Yeah. Um, because I hi- like, I highly recommend I, sort I of training training midday, mate, or training like the middle of the day. Like, yeah. don't don't train in the evenings anymore because you waste your time. I think. Yeah. I think also breaking up your day would be a really good idea, um, but pl- but play about with things. But what I've seen works really well, and what most good online coaches do is sort of have a morning block of work, train, have a little bit of evening work, sleep, sleep. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's what Steve does as well. Yeah, it's yeah. the only thing like within that time time period, like programming is something that takes me an awful long time. Okay. Admi- admittedly, because I think I dick around too much from a client finishing a mesocycle to then thinking, oh, they need a new fancy mesocycle with they don't. Sets, sets per week, all of that. And they don't. They I don't. really get too into it, I think. Um, and sometimes I sort of almost think I should just change up the exercises, keep the sets the same, and that's probably about it. Yeah. Well, um, I, I tell you what, I've got people to do recently, mate. Is basically, I just, I just say to them at the end of their blog, mesocycle, whatever you want to call it, I get them to either send me an email or a video, and just, just chatting, just chatting about their training. That's all I say. I just say, chat to me about the last eight weeks of training. L- list any exercises, exercise selection, intensity methods that you're not particularly enjoying or liking and list anything you potentially have seen. So they might, for example, I have one client and if I do end up putting this as like a small podcast, he'll know exactly who he is. And I have him and every time I do an exercise, (laughs) he'll say in his block review, I'd like that. So like when I started Seated Barbell HP, he was like, I'd really like to see it by the low HP. Yeah. <laughs> like, for God's sake, mate, like, do you just literally want my program? <laughs> um, but you'll have some people that will see something, like, they'll see, like, a new, 
fucking booty IG exercise. And they'll be like, Jack, can I have this in my program? And obviously, if there's rationale for it to be in there, you can put it in there and things like that. So I, I, I just get them them to think about the changes that they want. And then obviously, from my perspective and my programming ability, I'll change anything that I think is worth changing. So, for example, if they've had the same... Oh, I talked about this on my Instagram, uh, the same intensity method for a huge period of time. I most likely change that, you know, because yeah. essentially what we're trying to do with an intensity method, like a, you know, drop set, superset, whatever, is force an adaptation. We'll essentially get re- de- desensitized to that. We won't get the same sort of response as we did when we initially put it in the block. So taking it out for a bit, um, resensitizing to it later on or with another intensity method, that's probably worth doing. Um, but other than that, mate, like people can progress on compounds and, you know, the basics for, for a long, long time. Um, and actually you'll probably find your clients make more progress when you keep things the same as opposed to keep chopping and changing them. You know, the amount of times I've thought I needed to chop and change stuff when in reality, people are making super progress. It's like, just keep the momentum. It's like, yeah. why, why deload when you're making great progress? You know, that's the same question I ask myself when a client says, you know, should I deload? It's like, oh, do you have good momentum? Well, let's just keep going, you know? Yeah. Mm. That makes sense, mate. Yeah, I think I just sort of over, overcomplicate the process. So what would your average time be for a new block? <sighs> That's a good question. Yeah. It, it, could, it could vary massively. It could, be, it could be anything from like 20 minutes to like an hour. It, it totally yeah. depends. But the, the, mm. the remember that you can always... Um, the best way to write a new block on Google Sheets is to literally duplicate the last block. So left yeah. click, duplicate it, and then I just put any of the new movements that are in the mesocycle. Like I, I basically highlight them. I highlight them green or or a different color so that I know when I'm going through the video when I talk through the new block, whether it's attached to their check in in the week or whether it's just a separate video. It depends to when I program it. Um. I make sure that I run through all of those new movements and make sure that they're all clued up on what they're doing, why they're doing it, essentially. Yeah. Um, nice. So, yeah, I guess the whole the whole process probably <coughs> takes a little bit more than 20 minutes because the video is going to be 10 minutes alone itself. Yeah. So it probably takes at least half an hour for a block, um, yeah. which I think is a, I think that's a decent amount of time, you know, to, to uh, obviously a newer, a newer client on an initial training program that would take a bit longer. Um, mm-hmm. But if I have a good good idea of what they're doing already, good idea of where they're starting, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward to sort of get them straight straight set up and going, you know. Yeah, um, not too uh-huh. hard. No, that's that's wicked, mate. That's that sort of answered a question where I can probably reduce a bit of time on. Yeah, I'm no, spending. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I won't hold you for too long, mate. Cause I'm sure you've probably got some work to get on with this morning. Yeah, a few bits, not too much though. Um. <clears throat> fueling up on decaf coffee i'm taking a bit of a caffeine break um caffeine. i highly recommend it i feel really good